So today we're going to start with our very first look at uh, C++ with just a few of the basics, uh, showing how to get a simple program up and running, how to do some input and output, and what functions look like. Um, I've stolen some of this material from the C++ programming language book by Bjarni Struestrup, who is the creator of C++. It's a great book, although probably not the first one you want to read if you're just learning to code. So before you get started, you're definitely going to want to be able to run the code yourself, um, including the exercises. So if you're using a PC, uh, you're going to want to download the free Community Edition of Microsoft Visual Studio. Um, you'll be able to see what that download link looks like over here. Just give me one moment. There we go. Um, so you'll want to click on that um, free download link over here, uh, and it'll prompt you to install things. Um, if we're not using uh, Visual Studio, uh, you can go to this. If you've got a lockdown Chromebook, you can go to this online gdb.com for an online compiler. Um, you can see what that looks like. Here, this thing will have a run button where you will be able to take your code and run it like that. And if we shrink the screen a bit, maybe, uh, you can actually see that it produced some output. There you go. And I'll show you what the Visual Studio um, looks like. So we can just see what that's. Once you install and run Visual Studio, it might ask you to create a Microsoft account. We would just create a new project. Um, this may say all languages when you start. Just go to C++, say a console app, double click it, and take all these defaults if you want. Let's go back for a second and take a look at what that looks like. Oh, well, that's a bit better. Um, so, once you clicked on a default application, I'll take you back and start that one over again. So it'll look something like this, and you'll want to click on Create a New Project. And on this drop-down, you'll just say C++, and this console app. And for the name and location, you can just accept the defaults. And so you'll see they've got a basic program for you here. It's the same Hello World that everyone seems to use. It's got some helpful hints on how to get started. But uh, for the moment, we'll just get the, hey, if you press the 
F5 key, or if you go up here to debug, start debugging, uh, this will show you this thing is building, and now it's done, and then we'll need to show you that in fact there is a different window that it created. It is the console output of this thing. Let's see if we can actually find which one it is. So you can see that when we ran Hello World, we just printed Hello World, and we'll say press any key to close this window, which we'll do, and it will go away. Okay, so that will be how you can run the examples. Um, Moving back on our PowerPoint. And all of these things, again, are available uh, on GitHub at uh, Arduino from zero slash Hell Robotics CPP. Um, that will look something like this. And well, when you first get there, it'll look like this. And you'll be able to go to this code button to download a zip file, um, which will pop one open and you can open it up to get the files. I'll just show you here online. Uh, this, you've got the PowerPoint that I'm going through now. Uh, there'll be a file with the examples that uh, we'll see in the PowerPoint, so you can just cut and paste and try them out. And then the exercises will be the ones uh, that you can do on your own. So, let's get going. So, first, let's just look at what our very first example program looks like in C++. And the funny thing, of course, is that uh, even a very simple C++ uh, involves some more C++ that you wouldn't see until later, or to really understand it. We'll just show you, and here we go. So, um, here's a program that's going to do really nothing you can even see, but this is the minimum shell for a C++ program. Every C++ program has to have a function called main. Uh, it will return a value that's an integer, um, you know, so for example, a whole number 0, 1, minus 100. Uh, if it returns 0, that means the program exited successfully. Uh, any other value uh, indicates some sort of error. Um, and you'll see that a function, like main, uh, will take some arguments in between an open and close parenthesis. Uh, well, this main doesn't need any, so these are just empty. Um, the function body starts with a curly brace and ends with a closing curly brace. And this function just has the one line return zero a semicolon at the end, because most lines in C++ end with a semicolon. And that's it. Very uninteresting. So let's try to move to the traditional first example that actually does something, uh, which will print that lovely hello world. Um, so if we look at this example, um, we'll see this first line uh, with the uh, two forward slashes. That's a comment. Anything after Two forward slashes on a line is just a human readable comment. The uh, compiler is not going to care about that. It's going to ignore it completely. Um, this pound include of this IO stream, that's a header file that includes parts of the C++ standard library. Um, so let's just go with it for now that we need that there. Here we see our friend int main again. And this weird std colon colon c out. Um, this is, we're just going to call this a magical object, where if we put std c out and these two left arrows, uh, whatever follows, it will magically print it. Um, and then, as usual, we're going to return zero. So uh, if you want to try that out, um, you can. If you open up the example file, um, you will see something like this. So we can just go with cutting and pasting this thing. I've got it so that you will cut and paste in between those dashed lines. 
And so now, for example, we can go um, over to our online C++ compiler, for example, and we would paste that in there, and then we can just click Run. And we see Hello World, and it says just enter to finish up, so we will do that. Um, if you were going along in Visual Studio, I won't always switch back and forth between these two, but uh, just so you see it for the first one, uh, what we'll see here. Of course, you can't really tell because my example is their example, but there we go. And we would just click our little start debugging, it will build it, and it will pop up that console again that will show um, the output, and then we can hit a key to continue. So that's our first example. Of course, it's got, this is the chicken and egg part. It's like, hmm, this std colon colon thing seems pretty bizarre. Including things seems kind of bizarre. What the heck are these two left arrows? So for now, except that it's magic, and uh, we'll get to understanding those as we go along. Uh, so the next thing to understand in general about C++ is we write things called functions, which is basically uh, a way of putting uh, a piece of our code into a nice contained reusable chunk so that we aren't writing one piece of code that's pages and pages long. Um, so basically you'll write functions and then to create the complete program you'll call those functions from main. And every function has what's called a return type, the function is a name, and it has a set of arguments uh, which are also called parameters. Basically those are values you're handing to the function to do something with. So let's look at this uh, example here. It's going to be a function called square. Um, and it's going to take in a double. A double is C++'s uh, type for a floating point number, so 5.3 uh, or anything with a decimal point, for example. Um, so this says that this square function is going to take a value that's of type double, and it's going to call it x as a variable name. And this function square is going to return a double. So, as usual, we have our open and close curly braces. And square is very simple. It's just going to return x times x. So the asterisk in C++ is how you do a multiply. Um, okay, so let's see how this is going to work. We're going to put another function in there, and then we'll have a complete example for main. Okay, so now we're going to have this function print square down here. Again, it's going to take a double, and it's not really going to return anything, it's just going to print something. So C++ has a special type called void, which basically means no value. Um, so here we see our little friend C out and the magic uh, arrows here. And one of the cool things about C out is you can just string together a bunch of these uh, little things. We call them the insertion operator because C out is what's called a stream. So the idea is you're inserting values and they're flowing from here into the stream. So this thing is going to print the square of and then look we're going to send in another value x and this the word is and then we're going to call that function square with the value of x and right here this is going to be that return value of x which was x times x. And then we've got this other weird thing, which is indel, which is the end line character, um, so that after we call this, any more output will go on the next line. Okay, so let's put this whole thing together and call it from main. So we still need that IO stream header, because if we're going to use C out and end line, those uh, are declared up here in this IO stream header, so we need it. Got our function double, print square. And uh, for main, we're just going to call that function print square with a couple of different values. Um, and then, you know, let's see what that's going to look like uh, once we go to our compiler. So 
Well, let's do this, and I will cut and paste this example uh, in. And we'll run it. And lo and behold, the square of 2.5 is 6.25. Uh, and the square of mine, negative 1.2 is 1.44. Okay, so that seems relatively good. It seem to be working. So, what's next? So now I've got something um, for you guys to try out on your own. Um, so, next little thing to note is that a function can take more than one argument. So, um, where square took just double x. Now I've got a function called multiply, which is going to take one value uh, that's a double. We're going to, it's going to call it x. And a second value uh, that's also a double called y. So now what you should do is uh, implement this function multiply that's going to return x times y. You might want to look back at square uh, as a hint there. And Implement, so that's the first part. Uh, then implement a function called print multiply, like print square. Uh, hopefully you'll say something like, oh, the product of x and y is multiply of x and y. And then put that program together um, in a way that we'll call print multiply with a few different uh, pairs of values and run it and see if it works. So, uh, I recommend pausing the video and going off and uh, getting these things working. Uh, and the exercises, like the um, uh, like the examples, are also um, here. So, you could see, for example, that... The exercises will look like this. Uh, again, there's nothing starting you here yet, but uh, that's okay. So if you'll, there may be stuff to cut and paste here, or there may not, depending on the exercise. Okay, so go off and give that a shot. Uh, next thing, let's <laughs> look a little bit at what that crazy std colon colon was all about because hey if we're going to see it we might as well have a clue is what it is uh, that thing is called a namespace so std is the namespace for the c++ standard library which is a huge set of functionality uh, that you'll be able to use um, namespaces are very useful um, because if two people decide that they both want to say, oh, I don't know, implement a function called multiply. And who knows, maybe they're actually different in some weird way. Um, or maybe they're not. Uh, you can create your own namespace. And uh, if you put your namespace colon colon in your function name, you're guaranteed it's your version and not somebody else's. And if you do, and you can even call both of them. And if you didn't have namespaces, you might get weird conflicts, and that would be very sad. So that's what these namespaces are for. But even though they're useful, they're pretty annoying uh, to have to write that all the time. So as long as you're in a place where you're not going to have any conflicts, um, C++ has this lovely thing called a using directive, which is this um, using namespace std. Uh, and so now in this program we can write just c out and end l uh, instead of std colon colon c out. Um, so you may want to give that a shot and uh, verify that it works. Okay, so now let's do something a little more interesting. You've seen output. Uh, you can also do e input from the keyboard. Um, so just like c out, there's c in. Uh, to do input. Um, it uses something called the extraction operator, uh, which is basically two greater than signs. Uh, and you can see that that's in the opposite direction of the insertion operator we used with uh, C out. So um, here we've got something. We're going to have the user input a value. 
and we're just going to print it right back out at them. So as before, here's C out. Uh, we're going to have it put this little prompt that says type a number and press enter. Then we're going to have C in, uh, and it's going to, you can sort of see the value flowing along with the arrows from C in into X. And then we're going to print it out again uh, with C out. So if I uh, cut and paste that um, from the examples, just so you can see what it looks like. We will get something like this. And one thing to note about uh, CN is it is going to wait um, for you to hit the Enter key uh, to get something. So here's a number and press Enter. I will say 4.5. And it doesn't do anything until I hit the Enter key. Uh, and it says, ooh, you entered 4.5. Well, uh, not exciting, but it is going to be very useful. So let's take our newfound knowledge and try something out. So uh, here's the next exercise. So, and again, just like with C out, you can put in multiple values with C in. So uh, this example here says, okay, I'm going to have two variables, uh, x and y, uh, and I'm going to go from C in to x and wait for the user to hit enter, and then I'll go in uh, and have them enter y. So for your next exercise, uh, take that main function that you wrote back in exercise three, where you had the user enter, um, well, where you just hard coded a couple of values for x and y in your main function. Uh, but this time instead, have the user input x and y values uh, and then call print multiply so that uh, you can run it live. And uh, that's it for lesson one, because it's enough to get you started. Have fun with that, and I'll see you for the next lesson.